Okay, so this script might feel a little bit weird. I've had the bulk of it written for actually over a year at this point, I think. And why is that? Well, right after I had wanted to start actually working on this video, Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated was announced. And I figured now that the game is coming out, or at least has been out for a little bit as of this video being released, I might as well finally get around to reviewing the original. Okay, now let's get into the original script. Remember when childhood cartoons were actually good? Me too. Clearly those days are long gone with the garbage they play on Cartoon Network nowadays. I would make a statement about what's played on Nickelodeon now, but I really have no idea what's going on. And I don't really want to look it up. I'm not sure why I brought Cartoon Network into this. Spongebob is a Nickelodeon property. Well, maybe I should talk about Spongebob for a minute then. It started at the dawn of humanity and has spawned several cults in the devout worship of the sponged man. Really, the history of it is really fascinating as someone who is interested in ancient religions. Naturally, as with shows like Lucifer, it was decided to make an adaptation of this well-known religion and bring a new twist onto it. Anyways, with a popular property like Spongebob, of course there would be a video game adaptation. And one of the most popular is Battle for Bikini Bottom, made by Heavy Iron Studios, released in 2003. For this review, I will be playing the Xbox version on the Xbox 360 backwards compatibility. While not perfect, having some graphical issues, it does play just fine. I guess we should just get into it. My name is James, and this week on That Game Review Show, I will be taking a look at SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom for the original Xbox, PlayStation 2, and Nintendo GameCube. Despite this game being a childhood game for a lot of people, I wasn't really able to play it a whole lot. Sure, back when I was a wee lad, I had been able to rent this game from Blockbuster a few times and played it a couple of times on my friend's PS2, but I never really got too far into it. Over the years, I've gone back to it a few times, but I never actually beat it until I recorded the gameplay for this review, but I have always enjoyed the game. As a fan of the show back in the day, I am really surprised I never got around to actually beating it sooner. I did play the hell out of the movie game though, so that's close enough considering that was also done by Heavy Iron Studios. Spongebob and his deific counterpart Patrick, I think they're brothers or something. It's been a while since I've gone through my theology class. They're playing around and Patrick uses the magic conch shell in an ancient ritual to summon robots to Bikini Bottom. Well, Patrick doesn't summon them. Plankton in his lab creates a robot making machine and he forgets to hit the obey switch so the robots turn on him. Seeking help from his ruler, Plankton finds Spongebob and prays to him to help rid Bikini Bottom of their new plague. This is the antagonistic god, being Plankton, realizing his mistake and asking the more righteous gods for assistance. Spongebob goes in search of relics known as Golden Spatulas, because for some reason they are powerful enough to nullify the blocking effects of the other realms. Along the way, he meets with various other gods and heroes, like Bubble Buddy and Mr. Krabs. After receiving enough golden spatulas, Spongebob makes his way into the underworld. In this interpretation, it's called the Chum Bucket, and he finds Robot Plankton in control of the Robot Army. After taking down Robot Spongebob and entering his body, the fight against Robo Plankton begins. Once Spongebob finishes off Robo Plankton, they summon more versions of him and they all argue long enough for Spongebob to set things right. Okay, I think now that my quick story synopsis is done, I'll stop using the whole Sponge God joke. Heh, <laughs> Sponge God. I'm sure I've heard that phrase before, but I am actually kind of proud of that. The gameplay itself is fairly straightforward. You play as Spongebob, Patrick, and Sandy exploring this wonderful rendition of Bikini Bottom. You cannot change characters at will, you are limited to who you are until you reach a bus stop. Then you can switch uh, who you're playing as, but only to who the game decides you can play as. Some levels require Spongebob and Patrick, others Spongebob and Sandy. I don't really recall there being any examples of playing only as Sandy and Patrick, but I could be wrong about that. Spongebob gets a bunch of moves throughout the game, several of which are unlocked later on through Bubble Buddy as a reward for passing some thresholds. He gets a spin attack with his arms, a viking helmet uppercut, and a ground pound. Later on he gets like a bowling ball, a bubble rocket, and I think that's it. 
And yes, everything is basically made out of bubbles because of course. Didn't you know that Spongebob is the patron god of bubbles? I also forgot that he gets the ability to turn into a ball like a knockoff Super Monkey Ball, and it plays not very good. Patrick gets a belly bump and the ability to pick up and throw items and enemies. I don't think there's any other moves available to him. Sandy has the ability to lasso enemies, karate chop enemies, and swing on text assemblies. Oh, and also for whatever reason, she can swing her lasso and it will somehow slow Sandy's fall? Because of course. Didn't you know that Sandy is the patron goddess of what the fuck? Each character also has the ability to slide, each of which uses a different form of travel. Sandy slides down on, the, on a shell like a sled. I don't remember what Patrick does, but Spongebob uses his tongue like a disgusting slob. The game itself is set up similar to a Banjo-Kazooie style collectathon where the main MacGuffin, in this case the Golden Spatulas, are collected after doing various missions and are used to unlock later areas, each with a higher spatula requirement. There are a ton of different levels to play, and this game does something I really appreciate when games do. There are way more Golden Spatulas than what the game actually requires, which means that there may be some missions for whatever reason you can't beat or don't want to beat. Sounds reasonable, right? Well, I played through the entire game and did what I can do to collect all the golden spatulas. That is, until I got to Kelp Forest. This level fucking sucks, and you know what? I played a mission or two, then I fucking skipped it. I had more than enough spatulas even with skipping the entire Kelp Forest to beat the game, and I do appreciate this. The different level themes are great too. The first real level is Jellyfish Fields, then there's levels like Downtown Bikini Bottom, and I think I've already talked about Trench of Advanced Darkness based on Rock Bottom. There's also Spongebob's Dream, which for some reason connects to the other characters' dreams. The level design is usually fairly open and not too difficult, though there are always going to be shortcomings. The Mermelayer is probably my least favorite, apart from Kelp Forest, due to the fact I think the last puzzle glitched and I couldn't really even finish it. I do want to say something about the enemy variety. The main enemies in this game are entirely unique to this game. Nothing was really lifted from the show, obviously not counting some things like the boss or the King Jellyfish fight. I mean, I'm sure there's more that I'm just not thinking of. But the amount of creativity that goes along with coming with all these enemies in a fully licensed game is really cool to see. I mean, sure, they're almost all just robots with a similar base design. It would have been way easier to lift them off from the show, though. Actually, now that I think about it, are there many characters in the show that could be used as enemies? I'm not so sure. I suppose with that, I should bring up problems I have with the game. Well, there aren't too many, to be honest. Sometimes it feels like the knockback from enemies is way too strong, especially since they can knock you really far away if there isn't any ground to catch you. There could sometimes be unfair parts with too, any, too many enemies surrounding you. I think that says a lot about this game, when even I can't come up with that many negative things to really say about it. I'm even looking at the footage while typing this, and there isn't a whole lot of bad here. Some average stuff, sure, but that's about it. As a Spongebob game, of course, there are a lot of references to the show. In the Trench of Advanced Darkness, there is a vending machine that you can go to, and then the last bus to Bikini Bottom will leave just like in the Rock Bottom episode. That was the main one I identified with, it's just been so long since I've really watched any Spongebob, so I don't remember much else. Sorry for disappointing everyone. There are also some really funny lines in this game though, my favorite is probably this from Mrs. Puff. Oh, to me, I'll reward you with a golden spatula. Why do you want all that artwork? Don't ask questions you aren't prepared to handle the answer to. Consider the artwork saved, Mrs. Puff. The art style does a really good job representing the show's art without resorting to using cell shading. Granted, this game would have looked really awesome in a cell shaded art style, but I'm okay with what they went with. I'm not sure why they didn't do cell shaded though. Uh, maybe they just didn't consider it or have enough time to implement it. If that were the case, of course, then the SpongeBob movie game would have adopted it since it came afterwards. As I mentioned earlier, I played it on the Xbox 360 with some small issues, mainly involving graphical errors. The skybox glitched out a few times, and some of the models got a little strange at moments. Probably so infrequent, I wouldn't be able to find it. 
if there were many more issues, I didn't catch them. Oh, yeah, and then there was this whole uh, eyes disconnecting from the character model part in the Sky Needle. That was definitely a sight to see. Uh, the music in the game is fine. From what I remember of the show, not many of the tracks are carried over into the game, so it does remove some of the connections there. But the music in the game is serviceable for what it is. Overall, I do really like this game. It's a solid 3D platformer with a good sense of humor. And the game is fairly cheap, being roughly $10 on just about every single system it was available for. And like I said, the Xbox version is compatible with the Xbox 360. The GameCube version can be played on the Wii, and the PS2 version is... Well, if you have one of the first model PS3s, you can play it on there. But if not, you're shit out of luck. Unless you have at least one PS2 like I have. In fact, my boss just gave me two used PS2s that he wasn't using, uh, so now I have a total of four. And in all reality, I never use any of them. That's mostly due to the fact that my gaming setup doesn't work well with them for some reason. It might be due to, like, interference with the controllers, but the inputs just don't work right. And I know it's not a problem natively with the PS2s themselves, seeing as if I move them away from the setup, things work out just fine. I think I just like talking about how much of a waste of space and money I am. I mean, holy shit. If this game didn't interest you, or maybe you've already played it, one year later, Heavy Iron Studios did release the SpongeBob SquarePants movie game. It's very similar to this, uh, so if Battle for Bikini Bottom doesn't interest you, then you may have some problems if the movie game sounds right up your alley. In fact, it doesn't make sense to mention that game if this one didn't do anything for you. That was a really strange tangent. Whatever, this is a really good game, and any praise it gets is at least fairly reasonable. Unlike some other game I could mention. <coughs> Psychonauts. <coughs> Sorry, got something caught in my throat. Thank you so much for watching. Like I said, I had this written and ready to go for some months. And even just reading through the script again, some of my writing has changed a bit. But I am going to leave the script as it is, really. Anyways though, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please let us know down below. Next week will be Terrell's week, so please come join us back here then.